Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Ray Minya. And I'm Harminder Singh. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Ombudsman to investigate tree felling on Bonham Road. Hong Kong suffering from a business slump, survey shows. And wing found on Reunion Island confirmed to be from missing Malaysian Airlines flight MH370. The Ombudsman has opened an investigation into the government's decision to cut down four stonewall trees at Bonham Road in early August. The watchdog says the investigation will look into whether there were inadequacies in the administration's handling of the trees. More from Carino. There was public outrage when, on the 7th of August, the highways department cut down four stonewall trees growing on the masonry retaining wall between Bonham Road and St. Stephen's Lane. Some were angry, saying the trees posed no danger and felt that the departments concerned had failed to follow proper procedures in their actions and that they had acted without sufficient justifications and public consultation. In view of the public concerns, the Ombudsman Connie Lau says she had decided to open an investigation into the issue as a matter of priority. Lau said her office will investigate whether the departments concerned, namely the Highways Department, the Home Affairs Department and the Tree Management Office of the Development Bureau, had followed the relevant policies and procedures when making their decisions. The Ombudsman says she welcomes views and information from the public relating to the investigation. Karen Yang, ATV News. There are increasing fears of a full-blown economic downturn as latest statistics show private sector activity slumping to its lowest level in more than six years. Private companies are also said to be downsizing their staff numbers at a rate never seen before since the SARS outbreak in 2003. As Hong Kong's stock market recorded its seventh consecutive weekly slide, other sectors seem to have also taken a fresh hit. The Nikkei Purchasing Managers Index dropped to 44.4 in August, the lowest level since April 2009. The PMI is a gauge of how quickly the private business sector is expanding or shrinking, with the reading below 50 indicating contraction. A drop from July's 48.2 means an intensifying slowdown of private businesses. The survey also noted staff numbers shrank at the fastest pace since the SARS crisis in April 2003. New orders, a hint of potential future activity, slumped to its lowest level since December 2008, the height of the global economic crisis. As Hong Kong's economic fortunes are increasingly hinged to the mainland's performance, analysts believe the index will continue to remain below 50 in the months to come. Health Secretary Ko Wing Man has called on the public to support organ donation. Ko also said the government is looking into accusations that the University of Hong Kong's Faculty of Dentistry had used public funds to support its self-financing programs. Karin Yong has more. Some local newspapers today reviewed that the Hong Kong University's dentist school has been allegedly misusing public funds, amounting to millions of dollars. Reports said that the institution is suspected of subsidizing its self-financing programs with public resources, including making use of nursing staff and equipment of the Prince Philip Dental Hospital. Speaking to reporters today, Health Secretary Ko Wing Man said the government is looking into the allegations. The Bureau is now uh, in the progress of taking up uh, with the University of Hong Kong to delineate um, clearly, the resource utilization. As I said, the objective of uh, setting up the Prince Philip Dental Hospital is to support the educational program financed by the Universal, uh, University Grants Committee. So uh, any use of uh, resources from the uh, Prince Philip Dental Hospital in support of other self-financing program must be clearly accounted for. Co added that the school will have to return the money if the accusations are true. Asked about the Queen Mary Hospital patient whose liver transplant surgery was halted midway after the donor was found to have cancer, Co said he's concerned. But he said besides this patient who's critically ill, there could be up to 3,000 other patients waiting for an organ transplant in the city at any one time. Co called on the public to support organ donation. Karen Yang, ATV News.
Several political parties have set aside their differences to protest against a controversial proposal to scrap part of the tram lines between Admiralty and Central. Around 20 members of the DAB and residents from the Central and Western Districts handed more than 1,600 letters to the Town Planning Board demanding that it keep the trams. And members of the League of Social Democrats, who are also opposing the proposal, say the government should instead extend the lines to Chai Wan. The Democratic Party, meanwhile, gathered more than 2,700 letters to urge the government to think of other plans to ease traffic congestion on Hong Kong Island. The plan was submitted by former government town planner Sit Kwok Kyung, who suggested that trams between Central and Admiralty be scrapped because they occupy a lot of road space. The public consultation on rezoning Central District ends today. There are widespread out there are widespread outrage online after a Hong Kong goalkeeper revealed that he was called a dog by an opponent during last night's World Cup qualifier against China. The Football Association has played down the incident, saying it's hard to follow up on the allegations due to a lack of evidence. Security was extra tight at Bawan Stadium in Shenzhen yesterday, ahead of a World Cup qualifying match between Hong Kong and China. More than 1,000 security personnel, including riot police, were deployed for what was supposed to have been just a football match. Authorities were on high alert over possible clashes between Hong Kong and Chinese fans who had been trading buffs online over the past week. The match ended nil-nil, but tensions flared on the pitch. On his Instagram account, Hong Kong goalkeeper Yap Hong Fai revealed that an opponent, a former Asian footballer of the year, called him a dog after getting mad for failing to secure a victory. You have good skills, but you totally fail in terms of sportsmanship, Yap added. He later confirmed he was referring to China captain Zheng Ji. The post was later removed, but did little to stop the news from going viral online, with netizens mostly outraged by the insult. Head coach Kim Pang Gong played down the incident as the team arrived back in town today. I don't have much information about this. Maybe tomorrow let me, let me talk with uh, uh, a fight and uh, uh, try to find a problem. When bombarded by reporters, Yev said it may be a comment made during the heat of the moment, adding the incident will probably fade after a day or two. Speaking on radio this morning, former Hong Kong player Kwok Ka Ming said it's hard to take follow-up action as there's no evidence to prove the allegations. Football Association Chairman Brian Leung called for calm ahead of a rematch between the two sides in Hong Kong in November, with emotions set to run high again. The unease was caused by a promotional poster by the Chinese Football Association in June, which shows three figures with words saying, the Hong Kong team has black, yellow and white-skinned players, for such a diverse team beyond God. The posters have since been labelled racist and offensive. A Kuntong magistrate has criticised the prosecution for taking too much time over a case in which six people were charged with a suspected bomb plot in Sai Kung. But first, a senior official has been sentenced to eight months in jail, suspended for two years, for cheating the government out of millions of dollars in housing allowance and loans. Vicky Ren reports. The Wan Chai District Court this morning sentenced Lan Xiu Peng, a senior official at the logistics department, to an eight-month jail term, suspended for two years. Lan, who was also the controller of the department's land transport division, had pleaded guilty in July for cheating the government out of more than $4.2 million in housing allowance and loans. The court said considering the seriousness of the case that involved a large sum of money, community service was not deemed suitable for the defendant. But since Lan confessed and paid back the entire sum plus interest worth over $7 million, the court reduced the jail term from 12 months to eight. The 56-year-old Leung used fake receipts to claim rents of a flat in Kuntong in 1994, even after he had moved out. Leung later also applied for a down payment loan and housing allowance for a flat in Yunlong, receiving money that he was not entitled for nine years. The Kuntong magistracy has criticized the prosecution over its low progress in a case regarding six people who were charged with a suspected bomb plot. A prosecutor, who just took over the case last week from another prosecutor, initially asked to postpone the case for four weeks in order to have more time to look at 10 boxes of relevant documents. 
but the magistrate refused, saying senior prosecution officers should come to the court to explain the delay. The prosecution then agreed to adjourn the case for two weeks to the 18th of this month. Five men and one woman were arrested in June and charged with conspiracy to cause an explosion after explosive materials were found at the abandoned ATV studio in Saikong. No pleas were taken and the five male defendants were remanded in custody while the woman was released on bail. VQN ATV News. President Xi Jinping has held talks with his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin in Beijing. Both leaders have pledged to enhance cooperation and bilateral ties. Vicky Wan reports. One day after showcasing China's military might, with Russian troops also participating, President Xi Jinping met his counterpart Vladimir Putin to pledge his unwavering support in developing the Sino-Russian Comprehensive Strategic Cooperative Partnership. She said the two sides should expand cooperation in such fields like finance, investment and energy, while developing plans on the cooperation between the Silk Road Economic Belt and the Eurasian Union. She also said, as founding members of the United Nations and permanent members of the UN Security Council, the two countries will adhere to the principles of the UN Charter and create new type international relations based on a win-win cooperation. For his part, Putin praised Xi's message of dedication to peace delivered during the commemoration rally yesterday, and said Russia will also be committed to deepening cooperation between the two sides. A number of agreements in various fields, including foreign affairs, energy, infrastructure, education, science and technology, were signed after the meeting. Vicky Wen, ATV News. French authorities have confirmed that the piece of wing found on the shore of Reunion Island in the Indian Ocean is part of the wreckage of Malaysian Airlines Flight MH370. The part, known as a flapron, was found on the shore of the French-governed island on the 29th of July and Malaysian authorities have said paint color and maintenance record proved it came from the missing MH370 plane. French authorities, who had been tight-lipped until last night, confirmed that one of the three numbers found on the flapron is part of the serial number of the Boeing 777. The plane, with 239 passengers and crew on board, went missing in March last year, soon after leaving Kuala Lumpur for Beijing. The body of a toddler at the center of a heartbreaking photo that has captured the world, along with the bodies of his mother and older brother, have arrived in Turkey. But first, a religious ceremony was held at the Erawan Shrine in Bangkok two weeks after a deadly bomb attack. A Hindu religious ceremony was held at the Erawan Shrine today in the Thai capital, two weeks after a lethal bombing that left 20 people dead, including two Hong Kong residents. Brahmin priests led the ceremony, which was attended by the minister of the prime minister's office and the deputy governor of Bangkok. The explosion, which ripped through the shrine and damaged a statue of a Hindu god, was repaired by Thailand's Department of Fine Arts. So far, two suspects have been arrested in connection with the bombing, including one who admitted to being near the shrine during the blast and fingerprints tying him to the room of another suspected bomber. The bodies of two young boys and their mother who drowned at sea off the coast of Turkey while trying to reach the island of Kos arrived in Istanbul. The picture of the lifeless body of three-year-old Aylan Kurdi being carried by a paramilitary police officer has shocked and gripped the world as the photo humanized the current refugee crisis. By using this picture, we aim to raise awareness of people to the Syrian migrant crisis, the Iraqi migrant crisis, and the migrant crisis in general, to put a human face to it, said the chief editor of a Turkish news website. The distraught father, who was ultimately trying to reach Canada with his family, accompanied the bodies and will take them to Syria for burial. Meanwhile, in Hungary, hundreds of migrants, many of them refugees from the Syrian war, woke up after a night on a packed train stranded at a railway station west of Budapest surrounded by police. The police want the migrants to go to a nearby camp to process asylum seekers, but they are refusing to go. Hungary says the migrants must be registered according to European Union rules, but many refuse, fearing they will be sent back to Hungary if they are caught later in Western or Northern Europe, the final destination for many of the migrants. The migrant crisis has been exacerbated by military interventions, wars and fighting occurring in the home countries of the refugees. 
U.S. Vice President Joe Biden says he is unsure if he will run for president in 2016. Everybody talks about a lot of their factors, the other people in the race, and whether I can raise the money and whether I can put together an organization. That's not the factor. The factor is, can I do it? Can my family undertake what is an arduous commitment that would be proud to undertake under ordinary circumstances? But the honest to God answer is I just don't know. Speculation about a presidential bid for Biden has ramped up in recent weeks in light of a recent email scandal plaguing current Democratic presidential hopeful Hillary Clinton. Clinton has been accused of using a private email server while working as Secretary of State, which is against State Department protocols and U.S. federal laws and regulations.